In this video, I just want to give you some extra help with assignment number one. I've had a few students reach out to me and ask how to implement the filter functionality, where you're going to have some kind of button on the website. When you click on that button, it's going to filter the markers on the map, and it's only going to show some of the markers on the map. So maybe you only show waterfalls of a certain type, or maybe you only show parks of a certain type, or only restaurants and not coffee shops. So to figure this out, we'll go to modules and we'll go to week two here. And in week two, we went over a bunch of Google map examples. So if you go to Panopto, you can actually see the videos where we went over each one of these examples. So I'm not going to go over it all again, but I will show you how to add a filter functionality to the one example. So we had this one example here, array of markers, and this was showing markers on the map for all the educational institutions in Hamilton. And we had this color coding system where elementary schools were green and high schools were pink. And we had that post-secondary educational institutions were yellow. Um, so I think if we go down a bit, there's going to be Mohawk College there. And we had this, this nice little you know display here then of all the educational institutions in Hamilton. So let's add some filter functionality to this. So the way we implemented it was we used this education.js file. And the education.js file, this contains an array where each element of the array is a JavaScript object with a bunch of keys and values. And it's all the information for that institution. So each element in the array is an educational institution in Hamilton, and they have keys and values. So like the key name has the value of the name of the school, the address is the address of the school, the category is the type of school, is it an elementary school or is it a high school, what kind of school is it? and so forth, and longitude and latitude and everything else. And then in our array of markers example here, we've got the code that actually puts these markers on the map. So we create the map, and then what we do is we loop through the educational institutions in that array there. So we loop through all of them, and for each one of those educational institutions in that array, we create a marker and we add it to the map. And we use the data in this array to create the marker. So we like we use the longitude, we use the latitude in that array for each element of that array to you know use the latitude and longitude for each educational institution and the name of it and so forth. And after we've created the marker object, we put it on the map with new marker.setmap to put it on the map. We also attach some data to the marker object. So here we attach the name of the educational institution as a key of the marker object with this dot name key here. So this here creates the marker object. So the Google API actually creates the marker object, but we're adding our own key to it. So we're adding our own special key to it dot name, and we're basically taking the educational institution's name and adding it onto it. And we're doing that because when we create the info window here for the marker, we use that data. So we use the educational institution's name there and we display the name when it's clicked on using that data. We're gonna do something similar when we go to do filtering. So what we'll do to implement filtering is we're gonna actually keep track of all the markers in a big array, so that way we can access them later and do things to them, like check their category and either put them on the map or take them off the map. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is basically create an array of all the markers and keep track of them. So we'll say here var markers is equal to, and we'll make this initially empty array for storing our markers. And then every time we create a marker object here, we're gonna push it onto that array. So that way we can keep track of all the marker objects. So I'll say here markers.push new marker, and we're gonna add each marker to the markers array now. So now we've actually got an array that's keeping track of all these objects. So we can use them again. We can look at them again, say in response to a button being clicked, and we can do filtering based on that. Now I wanna do filtering such that when I click on a button, it's only gonna show the elementary schools. So because I wanna do that kind of filtering, I'm gonna actually attach to each marker object an additional piece of data. I'm gonna also attach not just the name of the school, I'm also going to attach the category of each school. So I'm going to say here, new marker dot category 
is equal to education I dot category. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually attaching to each marker object the category of the school itself. So that way, when I look at the markers again in this array, I can look at the category key of each marker object to help me determine whether it should be filtered or not. So the next thing we'll do is we'll actually add the button to the page and we'll set up an event handler. So I'll say up here, button ID elementary, elementary, and we'll close the button. And when this button is clicked, it's going to be doing the filtering. So we'll set up an event handler down here. I'll say document dot get element by ID elementary. And we'll say on click, it's going to run some function. The function it's going to run is filter elementary. So we'll set this as the function to run when that button is clicked. And what the function is going to do is it's going to loop through all the elements of this array here. It's going to check the category using this key here. And if the category is elementary school, then it's going to put it on the map. If it's not, it's going to take it off the map. So we'll say here for I is equal to zero. I is less than markers dot length I plus plus. And we'll say here if markers at I dot category is equal to elementary school, then put it on the map. So we'll say markers at I dot set map and we'll say map else. If it's not an elementary school, we don't want to put it on the map. So I'm going to say markers at I dot set map null. And when we do this, it's not like the marker object is going to cease to exist. We're just setting it to not be on any map. So by saying set map null, it's just not going to be on the map anymore, but it does still exist. So we can save this here. And then if I do a refresh, we've still got all the markers on the map initially, but if I click on elementary now, it filters down to only the elementary schools. And so that's how we could do filtering. We could also do something like an all button too. So let's say we want to have an all button that puts all the markers back on the map. So to do that, we'll make another button up here. I'll say button ID is all, all and close the button. And we'll make another event handler here. So I'll say here, document dot get element by ID. We'll say all and we'll say show all. And what this function will do is show all the markers on the map. So we'll say function show all. And then I'll say here for i is equal to zero, i is less than markers dot length, i plus plus. I just want to show all the markers on the map now. So I'll say markers at i dot set map map. So I'm not going to have any if in here to check to see what kind of a marker it marker it is. I'm just going to say here, no matter what kind of marker it is, just set the map to be map to put it back on the map. So I'll save this here, do a refresh here. We get back to this state here. If I click on elementary, it'll show only the elementary schools. If I click on all, it shows everything again. So this is how we could do some filtering buttons. And what I'll do is I'll save this example as filter.html. And we'll, we'll take these files here and I'll upload them to my canvas here in our own example. So I'll say this is the filter example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it under this week here, week two, with the rest of the example code for Google Maps. So I'll just say, create a file here, and we're just going to add the file. So I'll say file. I'm just going to upload it now. And so there it is there below the Google map example there. So you can just uh, download that and check this out. And hopefully this video has been helpful for explaining how to do filtering buttons.